Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Mose, and thank you, Don. Um, now, to continue our presentation, I mentioned that we do have a new award tonight, uh, underwritten by Endo Pharmaceuticals of Chad's Ford, Pennsylvania. It's been a great pleasure of mine to get to know the fine work that that company does. Uh, but they, like so many of others that really see beyond the present, understand the value of high quality, cost effective healthcare that really integrates with the needs of older patients. And as Ken Dykewald and others have alluded, uh, there is so much to be done to try to prepare the way for an unprecedented number of older patients going in, needing health care, and needing it not in a disjointed, not in a siloed way, but in a in, in its entirety that takes into all into consideration all the factors of their lives. And so we have conceived of this new award, the Silver Innovator Award, which this year and in years to come will recognize a notable individual, it would be an academic uh, unit or a company or a not-for-profit organization that really is showing the way toward how we can embrace the needs of older patients and make the most of this wonderful gift of longevity that we have has come to us in the last hundred years. And so tonight I asked Brian Lorty of Indo Pharmaceuticals to come to the stage and present the first ever Silver Innovator Award. Brian. So much. Thank you so much, Dan. Uh, on behalf of Endo, we are very, very proud to be associated with the Alliance and to be here tonight to present the inaugural Silver Innovator Award. At Endo, we're trying to do something a little bit different. We're, we're trying to be creative with an eye to where healthcare is going. And in doing so, we're trying to evolve our company from its historic basis as a pharmaceutical product focused company into an organization that really changes and views the world through the eyes of our customers, whether it be providers or patients or physicians, and tries to come up with solutions that help those people solve the economic and clinical challenges that they face every day. We aspire to do this by therefore providing solutions across a broad array of, uh, of products, be they pharmaceutical products, generic products, medical devices, uh, mobile services and information technologies that solve the challenges faced by our healthcare world as we face it today. You know, innovation really is what we do every day and it's at the core of everything we do. And therefore, it's particularly uh, rewarding to us to be associated with the inaugural uh, awarding of the Silver Innovator Award, which embraces, as Dan said, organizations or individuals that anticipate and embrace the evolution of integrated, high quality, and cost-effective health care aligned specifically with the needs of older patients. I'm honored tonight to present the first award to Dr. Linda Freed. Dr. Freed is the Dean of the Mailman School of Public Health at Columbia, and she is the very first recipient of the Silver Innovator Award. Dr. Freed is a leader in the fields of geriatrics and population science, and she is truly dedicated her career to the science and the learning of healthy aging, particularly in the areas of the prevention of frailty and disability. Her work has led to a better understanding of what frailty is, what causes it, and how it impacts quality of life in a profound way for our aging population. Among many things, she's the co-founder of the Experience Core, which is an innovative evidence-based public health initiative that approaches healthy aging focused on again on the prevention of frailty and the prevention of disability for older adults. Dr. Freed's work and accomplishments exemplify the importance of scientific leadership in its role in creating the knowledge necessary to improve the health of people who are now living longer and enjoying richer lives. My congratulations, therefore, to Dr. Freed on her receiving of this award, and as always, to the Alliance of Aging Research on 25 years of truly wonderful work that they've done to improve the lives of Americans as they grow older. Dr. Freed.
that um, there's, there's uh, something particularly uh, potent about getting recognition from one's colleagues and peers, uh, who I have so much respect for, and um, to have the opportunity to share a podium with such luminaries. Um, so Ken Dykeball, Senator Zenzi, and Durbin, and uh, the legacy and the forward legacy of 25 years of the Alliance for Aging Research. Uh, thank you all. I, I'm very honored. Um, I really am. And um, it, I've had the opportunity when I was asked to accept the award to think a little bit about how important this silver innovator concept is and, and the necessity of innovation in the 21st century. And I wanted to just make three comments. Um, innovation, as, as you know, uh, has been defined as creativity with a purpose. And I think this is a critically important moment for innovation. And this is the critically important audience to help accomplish it. Because innovation has to be, in the 21st century, multi-sectoral, a partnership across all sectors with a vision of what we need to accomplish to, for our forward purpose and our common good and into an era that we've never experienced before in human history and don't know how to do it right. We do not know how to do it right, but we've heard a vision already of what it might look like. And I think there are three critical elements we're going to need. One is to recognize what Ken Dykewald opened with, which is that the 20th century was a century of immense success, unprecedented success. Human beings have never lived to the ages we're getting to live before, and it's a combination of science brought out in public health and medicine and education that has propelled us to this opportunity of living longer lives. The challenges of the 21st century, I think, are a whole different game. They are a different game. They are a game of vision, mixed with science, compelled by wisdom and leadership, and we need all four. And the, the game is how to take the success of the 21st century and get it over the tipping point of the, to a victory of the 21st century, because the alternative is to take the success and declare defeat. And that really is not in our collective or individual interests. So what would that tipping point be about? Well, we've heard a tremendous number of visions already, starting with Ken Dykewald, about what that might mean. Um, but in particular, I think we have to build on the kinds of co-leadership across sectors that are here. And we have to build on the very, very important foundation of innovation that this country, in a lot of ways, uniquely has created all over the years, of the conditions that grow uh, our future. And that is a partnership between leaders of our country, the public, great universities, and great National Institute of Health in partnership to create the knowledge and implement it in a way that makes a difference for our lives. We have a partnership in this country forged over the last half century that has been incredibly potent. Each sector knows what their role is. None of us can do it alone, and none of us can do it without the other. But together, we've demonstrated already a foundation for innovation that is, I can tell you, every day from where I sit, the envy of the world, and is being both emulated and sometimes leapfrogged by other places in the world. Um, this foundation is precious, and it provides the base to do the third thing. And the third thing, which Ken Dykewald started out with, is to change the frames of how we understand our opportunities. The gift of longer life could be the most amazing gift that we've ever experienced. 
not just for us as individuals. I, I often teach classes where I ask the students if anybody would not want to have this longer life for themselves or their parents. I've never had anybody raise their hand. <laughs> never. But how we create and experience the benefits of it beyond our families is going to be a profound act of imagination. It's going to require recognizing that many of our fears are not grounded in fact in our myths and are untested and making sure that we're driving the science and policy towards the vision of what an optimistic future would be. Because in fact, if we have a society where there's one older adult for every child, that could be huge opportunity for the future of our children. That's where we're about to be. If we have a society where people are living a third of their lives in a different kind of retirement than Ken Dyke well described, um, where they are healthy and engaged and able to contribute to help meet the needs that otherwise we do not have the human capital and social capital to meet, we could in fact accomplish together much more than we ever dreamed. And the conditions of that will be healthy aging, and the creation of other frames of social institutions that help bring out the capabilities of older adults who are healthier and better educated than we've ever seen in the history of the world. I think the future could be incredibly optimistic, but we have to harness science and knowledge to do that. Geriatric medicine, geriatric knowledge has been invested for decades in figuring out not just what healthy aging would look like, but what the benefits could be to us of having more wise older adults around. People who are capable of synthetic problem solving, have the patience to hang in there for the long haul on complex problems that would scare any self-respecting 20-year-old, and <laughs> care deeply about leaving the world a better place than they found it. We could actually do this together, and I think we have the foundations of knowledge creation and science, which if we build on them and change the frames for what our goals are, we could actually turn success into victory. Thank you.